since Brooklyn embarrassed them by 30, the Stephen Curry and Andrew Wigginless Golden State Warriors have evidently woken up, given they just extended their winning streak to four consecutive games. The Warriors finished their most recent win against the pesky Dame Anthony Simons and Jeremy Grant-led Blazers on a 16-2 run, vamping their home record to its league-best record of 16-2. Clay and Jordan combined for 72, DiVincenzo recorded the game-saving steal plus three on the next possession, Draymond made two of his four attempted triples, also combining with Looney for 22 rebounds, Ty Jerome, Anthony Lamb, and most impressively John Kaminga combined for a crucial 23 points off the bench. A game before this, in a revenge win against Utah, Draymond Green's two blocked shots down the stretch helped seal it. Green aggressively hyping up Jonathan Kaminga in that one speaks to how the former DPOY leads in his own controversially old school way. The development of JP and Kaminga as this season progresses is being fully showcased without the dub's two top options in Wiggs and Steph, as Jordan and Jonathan are living up to Steve Kerr's next man up mentality. Another man doing that is Patrick Baldwin Jr. Good job, Patrick Baldwin Jr who in the win against Utah joins Steph, Clay, Moody, Anthony Morrow, and Reggie Williams as the only rookies in Warriors history to hit three three-pointers made on 60% three-point shooting in back-to-back -back games. Nevertheless, given the fact that they're an NBA worst 3-16 after flying out of San Francisco, the defending champions remain incredibly confusing. However, this current hot streak for Golden State is reminding me of when they snapped their cold streak down the stretch of last season and won five straight directly before the playoffs started, all without Steph as well. While this current streak comes much earlier in the year, the dubs seem to be finding their identity without their top player, which I'm predicting is going to lead to a hot streak that'll extend into something much more noteworthy than the one we're currently witnessing. Since I made this video, with a thumbnail of KD calling out Poole, Jordan slash back at D-Flow with four consecutive 24 plus point outings. But has his efficiency been anything special over this stretch, and why has Jordan become a confusing player in terms of his consistency? Before breaking down that, just 13.2% of you watching are subscribed, so please subscribe if you haven't already. Also leave a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. So, the most recent second half Golden State played against the Blazers saw the Warriors force Portland into both a rare 5 second violation off the inbounds and 8 second violation. Winners of 4 straight and 5 of 7 if you include the win against my Raptors. Golden State's finding their identity with a completely new cast of role players than they had in their championship season. Dante DiVincenzo has been really solid all year long, from the scrappy activity and lateral quickness he provides defensively, to the shot creation and the 41.5% three-point stroke Dante brings to the table. Now you see exactly why DiVincenzo was such a hot topic on this channel after the dubs picked him up in the summer. With the losses of Otto, GP2, and Nemi, DiVincenzo's energy and execution mean everything to the dub's chances. You can't forget about the rarely discussed playmaking from the steady Kavon Looney, whose 2.9 dimes per night rank him just ahead of Dante for the 4th highest assist average on the Warriors and the 8th best mark among all NBA centers. As I've made a habit of mentioning about the dub's 5 man whenever he comes up, a guy who's outscoring opponents by plus 53 when he's on the court this year, Looney's top of the league caliber hands to secure high velocity, tough to snatch rebounds and passes in traffic make him a damn crucial ingredient to this dynasty. Jordan Poole may be the most confusing player not just on the Warriors but across the NBA, as one night the man resembles a guy who can speed past and outcraft any defense put in front of him, like he did amidst posting his NBA fourth most second 40 point game in the month of December. Then he'll get a ton of hype which I'm guilty of giving him, and the next night he'll look like a mid-tier point guard at best. For example, before this recent obliteration from Poole, this man made just 7 of his 22 shots from the field. He still dropped 26, and you have to appreciate this should have been 6th man of the year's aggressiveness despite a rough shooting night. You also can't forget that as the number one scoring threat minus the greatest 3 point shooter ever, the role JP is currently in is one the 23 year old 4th year pro out of the University of Michigan is only just getting accustomed to as the number one option. It takes 5 to 10 years for some players until they learn how to effectively read and react consistently to the most advanced coverages and most athletic 
athletic defenders that planet Earth has to offer. I think of a guy like Kyle Lowry, who was a late bloomer with my Toronto Raptors, but just ask Stephen Curry, who didn't make the playoffs as a number one option until his fourth year in the league back in the 2012-13 season. After Jordan signed the mind-boggling four-year, $140 million contract extension, the expectations of looming pocket watchers have weighed down heavily on him, but despite the criticism from skeptics and the refs calling him out for every little thing back in the early going of this year, we're talking about a player who's now in the midst of his first 20-plus point-per-game campaign. Jordan's improved defensively, but he's still slightly below average on this end of the court in terms of what the advanced analytics say. Not only is the next step for JP picking his spots better and making fewer lackadaisical mistakes, but it's that very defense I just alluded to that's the key to unlocking every bit of his upside. Regardless of if he plays well, watching Poole is an absolute spectacle. Whether he's pulling off show-stoppingly innovative combinations off the bounce, or even with his facial expressions in reaction to bad calls, JP's box office in his own way. After this dribble handoff from Draymond, this initially seems like solid drop coverage from Mason Plumley, but just as Poole seeming to be locked up, facing the right baseline on the hash marks of the painted area, he hezzy dribbles while changing hands with the ball, fake shimmies the slight bit back to that direction while using a moving jab step before completely fooling Mason by going the other way. That was as creative of a Smitty move as they come. After an underhanded shuffle pass, again facilitated by Draymond, this up fake and smooth transition to his drive is followed by an eyebrow raising nifty up and under jelly finish going from the paint to the perimeter, and whether it's from the mid-range, on simple pull-up triples, or off-balance manufactured, seemingly impossible looks like this step-back triple off the dribble, Poole's a natural, coincidentally, Stephen Curry caliber-esque deep-range marksman. In terms of the passing chops, while Clay comes off this weak side pin down where Dre sets a big body on both Sharp and Grant, almost like a one-man elevator screen from the corner, Watch this elusive entry pass from Poole, where he dribbles back and forth between the legs while changing direction to get a clear passing lane by keeping the defense off balance before whipping a 100 miles per hour one-handed bullet to the corner, a spot which the Warriors usually struggle from, but Thompson locks in and hits it. Showing off his underrated reach and vertical jump for a point guard, a slight jab step and quick twitch first step gets Poole past the rookie Shaden Sharp, then he puts both the Rook and Josh Hart on a poster. Moving on to this craftily one-of-a-kind mid-range pull-up, which comes after a saucy jab right, slight drive entry left, spin back right, and hezzy dribble. You saw the Curry-esque range, but how about the Curry-esque off-ball motion? Poole cuts back door after driving hard left to get sharp off balance. Great dime as always from Green. Setting up his second up and under of the game, Jordan shakes up Josh Hart right here with a shifty off-handed in and out, and Dwayne Wade type burst through the lane. That was the D Wade in his bag. The next play shows you the Rajon Rondo in his bag, a possession after setting up Draymond following a drive on the baseline, another stop and go on the catch, gets another wild closeout from a Blazer defender looking silly, JP dribbles back to his right after coming off the screen left, and fakes a behind the back pass by palming it behind his back and not releasing the dime, instead extending it over the outstretched contest of Grant for the bucket. Capping it off, watch the video game-esque space that Poole opens up with this elusive jab step as Hart goes backwards in rhythm with that jab. After Clay Thompson may have come up on the short end of the stick in terms of his beef with Devin Booker early on in the year, to be fair, he's got four more rings than D-Book does, but in terms of Clay's most recent beef with Dylan Brooks, Thompson took the W in this one without a doubt. I'd say Thompson, but specifically Memphis's Brooks, are two of the most high-volume trash talkers in the association, but with that said, Clay outscored Brooks and infamously stared him down after hitting a three in his grill, with Brooks falling down, maybe rubbing it in a tad bit, but that had a meaning, as Clay called out Dylan postgame for calling the Grizzlies a dynasty when they've yet to make it past the second round of the playoffs. Don't get me wrong, Memphis is on the come up, as I mentioned in another video, but Clay just took the W this time and the sea captain enjoyed every moment of it. The last two games for Thompson have signified that this man's playing the best ball of his career, definitively perseverant and inspirational when you factor in the torn right Achilles surgery he went through in 2020 and the torn left ACL surgery he went through a year before that in 2019. 
If Clay keeps up this type of production, we're going to have to spend a film room session breaking down his all-time smooth shooting stroke. In a contract year, not only has Draymond Green lived up to his name of being one of the greatest defensive players of all time, but he's been a laser from three-point range. Since coincidentally the last game I was personally in attendance for in Toronto, been taking some time off from my Raptors until it's fully clear of potentially being Wemben Yama season in a few months, but including that December 18th game, over his last seven outings, the Warriors' generational two-way stretch four in Dre has made nine of his 23 attempts from distance, and the shots Draymond's making are timely ones when the Warriors need a bucket, as Dre's low-key carrying this Dubs team not just with his defense, but with that shocking efficiency from beyond the arc. What's shocked you the most about Golden State in 22-23? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout-out, and the top five commenters by March 21st earn free merchandise of their choosing. Today, shout out goes to FYI Sin, who says I'm a Warriors fan and I can say this, KD definitely can win a chip as the number one creator. Pause to read the rest of that take. Appreciate every answer. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.